Okay, I'm not gonna pause too much. That's a promise. But um, let's get into this. Let's let's start the stream today by watching this and see what uh, what happened here. I'll, hold on. Unmute. Okay. Yeah. Let's start with this, and uh, we'll see what was said. My ears are bleeding. Jesus, that's loud. Okay. Hey everyone, I actually did not podcast. watch this yet. Today we're going to talk about The War Within, which Alpha starts soon. I have two special guests with me today. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Ian, Game Director on WoW. I'm Tina, Associate Art Director on WoW. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Before we talk about Alpha, what can you summarize about The War Within, Ian? Well, so The War Within, I mean, of course, it is the 10th expansion to a right. well-known video game, World of Warcraft. My God. But even, I think, more special... Ten fucking expansions. Holy crap. How long have I been playing this game? To us, it's the beginning of the World Soul Saga. It's the beginning of probably the most ambitious story we've ever tried to tell. I'm so excited. Wow. Uh, so as you know, all expansions do, it kicks off with a journey to a new place. But really, this is going to be beginning to set the stage and establish... Oh, shit. I just noticed. That's the Collector's Edition uh, statue. That thing's pretty big. Damn, that's like, isn't it like $180 or something? I think it's kind of expensive. I forgot what the price was on it. But I said whether or not it's worth it all depends on how big this statue is and how good it is. If this thing is made from the same shit that they made the Ragnaros statue out of, uh, this thing's pretty badass. I said my brother has that Ragnaros statue. It's like 15 pounds. No, he is just really for small. For a conflict yeah. that threatens <laughs> right. not just Etia, you know, what's ourselves up? And, and our families <clears throat> and those we hold dear, but the very world that we call home, the very world beneath our feet that's been home to all of our adventures. And if we don't win this one, nothing else matters. True. So this character has been everywhere for the War Within. Zelotath. She's purple. She's amazing. Yes, Can you tell us more blade. about her? Yeah, Zalapath is, uh, you know, one of our key villains of the World Soul Saga. The expansion is, I mean, part of it is, is this sexy. journey, uh, delving deeper, find Zalapath and her allies. And uh, the inspiration uh, for her design from an art side was really based on the uh, priest artifact weapon that she had been trapped in for so long. I like it. I, I really like the new so model. So if you look at her armor. I actually pointed this out already. The dagger's right here, man. Like all the motifs of you know her belt, really cool her stuff. shoulders really take inspiration from that uh, design. Uh, even the runes on her cheeks, uh, those are a homage to yeah, Zoth, cute. who freed her from the dagger. Ah, naifu. Yeah, so if later on in War Within you find yourself you know wiping to a raid somewhere, just blame the shadow priests for not just putting the knife down. Yeah, why didn't Walk they away put from that? the talking dagger, and oh, we wouldn't be here. Blame the priests. I mean, that's a common theme on my stream. Oh my and God. yet. Um, are there any other souls? familiar faces that we can recognize? Uh, yeah, some of the key uh, heroes of our story are uh, Illyria and Anduin. So these two, they've, I mean, they're, they're running a bit, right, from some of the wounds of their past. But in the end, they're going to find hope and redemption. So, you know, Illyria, we've seen her uh, new design that really reflects the duality nice. of her character. Nice new model. And Anduin. Uh, we saw him in our cinematic, and he just looks, you know, a little more haggard. He's, he's been through a lot lately. Is it me, or does his model look a little bit unfinished still? He looks a little bit blur. I don't know. It's, it's yeah, Alpha. He's so. his beard. <laughs> he's <laughs> working on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the name The War Within is one that has a couple of layers to it. Right? Obviously, we're literally delving beneath the surface of Azeroth and going to be battling within our world. But this is also a story that involves a lot of inner turmoil and inner conflict. And Anduin is probably the most torn of any of our, our cast of heroes, given what he went through in the Shadowlands. And his journey into the darkness as he seeks to rediscover his own light is a big... Are they showing this for a reason? Are they showing this clip for a reason? How many times have we talked about the fact that a piece of art this might still be in Anduin? Uh, <laughs> They might be hinting at something. I don't know, either that or I'm just reading into this too much. But he's talking about a war with an Anduin, and he's literally showing the Arthas scene. super rare on me, yeah. Yeah, super rare come for sure. Part of the narrative arc. I would super and rare come the war with it turns out new that's zones. what it is. Can we talk about what our new zones are going to be? The continent as a whole that begins on the surface and extends beneath the Earth, right, is we're calling Kazalgar. This is an ancient home to the Earthen. It's actually just off the west coast of Pandaria, about between Pandaria and Kalimdor. You know, just a, you know, a couple hundred nautical miles away from a certain sword that's sticking oh. out of the southern end of Kalimdor. But yes, home to four zones um, with amazing varied settings. 
Yeah, uh, it's our first zone, uh, the Isle of Dorne. I love, the, I love this. this. It looks so you'll nice. You'll find an isolated group of earth in there. And so they have their awesome city, Dornogal, which we're very excited to, for players to check out. That'll be the hub in the end. The dwarf aesthetic is actually really badass and super contradictory to what we've seen so far in Dragonflight, all the curviness and all. This is like so cool, squared off. It just all looks like it's, it's it, it. I love this aesthetic. This this whole island uh, is so good. The second zone is the Ringing Deeps. So you know the evocative of like mine pigs, industry, and so this is the heart of earthen industry. But it's not all just you know lava and fire. It's uh, mixed with these beautiful caverns, cenotes with uh, light and water coming in, creating these uh you know lush spaces for the players to enjoy. Looks great. And then uh, we go to Howlafall. Hallafall is where we really uh, wanted to break expectations. I like this one. The, the, the lore for this zone, I cannot wait to get into. It looks so damn good. And uh, this is Arathi airships. Right, underground airships, right? The first thing you'd naturally <laughs> think of when you're going under the surface, how are they going to get around? Well, airships, of course. Of course. <laughs> And then our final zone. Yeah, she got very passionate when she said the word airships there. That was interesting. Is Ashkahet. <laughs> so this is the heart of the Nerubian Empire. This is where we'll finally be able to see the Nerubians so cool. and all of their strength and glory, like with the height of their civilization. I think uh, we'll get into the details of Alpha later, but everyone's journey is going to start in the Isle of Dorne. But I really can't wait until we get to Hallowfall in our testing. Yeah, I think the Hello Tina Fall, mentioned that this crystal the lore, man. is such a striking visual element that dominates the zone. Imagine in this place deep within the earth, a radiant crystal of it, it, For some reason in these clips, it looks brighter than it did in the original uh, version that they showed us back at BlizzCon. I don't know if they turned up the brightness or contrast on this or what, but this thing is bright as shit. I mean, it's, it's lighting up everything light and the way you know as it illuminates the surroundings that actually ray tracing with going the on. environment and some of the spawns and how the world around it reacts to it and i think when we set out to create this underground space we knew that one of the risks was that it could feel oppressive that people didn't want to feel the sense of claustrophobia of you're always in caves mm -hmm. true hallowfall really from the outset was built to be a place where Honestly, unless you fly all the way up to check out the ceiling above you, it doesn't feel underground. It feels it like you could be outdoors in some vast... The thing even has clouds, man. This thing must be radiating heat. It, look, it looks intense. Welcoming area that's just, it's incredibly epic. When we arrive to the Isle of Dorne, what's the first thing we'll see? Well, so you're going to see something a bit different in Alpha from when the expansion goes live. There is an expansion intro experience that is not currently being tested. It's something that has some you know, cool narrative elements that we want players to all experience together later in the year when War Within launches. But players will spawn in in the Alpha on the Isle of Dorne, surrounded by some debris that will look pretty familiar and pretty distinctive and really is yeah, the scars is, of an initial battle. It's Dalaran, man. It's crazy. I, I don't mean to spoil this for you guys, but I think I've seen this all over everywhere. There's no way you guys don't already know this, but Dalaran crashes. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but that's... That it's gone, like it man. ...and so well. Um, Rip, yeah. And the beginning of our journey, as, as, many, as with many expansions, is a bit of a mystery, a bit of an investigation of, of arriving in a strange land, having this threat that we face, these visions, these whispers that heroes around Azeroth have been hearing in, in recent months, but trying to understand the nature of the threat we face, how we're going to stop it, and our journey begins on the doorstep of these ancient earthen people who are going to begin, you know, yeah, a lot of information revealed about these guys yesterday. Go They're going to become our next allied race too, right? Once we are in their trust, that's for sure. <laughs> Is there any other NPCs that we're going to be familiar with? Yeah, there are going to be uh, some characters that we haven't seen in World of Warcraft in a while, but will be, you know, part of this story. Uh, that's because of their, you know, dwarven heritage and, you know, Magni, he boy. hears the Radiant Song. He brings some of his family members along. Uh, Moira, who is leader of the Dark Iron Dwarves and heir to Ironforge. Uh, she'll be here with her son, Dagran, who is now a young what adult. What the shit? This guy was a baby. I remember him. He had the giant eyebrows. Wasn't he the baby in Ironforge the last time we saw him? Wow, look at him. He's a, he is interesting looking. Uh, Dagran, the last time we saw him in game, he was this pretty generic looking dwarven baby. Yeah. But now... <laughs> he didn't uh, even have gray skin. Now he's got gray skin. I thought he just looked like a regular dwarf before. Yeah, now, damn. This is an interesting looking model. 
He's very, uh, he looks like he's very and into research. And the last time we saw him in game, he was this pretty generic looking dwarven baby. But now, <laughs> uh, you know, the dark iron heritage is starting to show more in his Come appearance, servant. along with his personality. We have a so he to Locturnal, thank you for the follow. Welcome to our scourge. The scrolls and books, like really showing that he has a very scholarly nature. I think one of the one of the fun aspects of just world building and narrative in WoW is we have this vast array of characters and champions and heroes and, and you know backup characters, and whenever we figure out where we're going, what the next natural location is, what the story elements are, the mm -hmm. first question we ask is, who needs to be here? Who does it make sense to have answer this call, want to step forward? Just as when we were dealing with. You know, the green yeah. dragon flight. I hope it's not just who needs to be there, but who actually should be doing shit, because I felt like they brought everybody into Shadowlands, and then they just all stood around, stood around and kind of circle-jerked each other in Oribos for, like, the, the entire expansion. They just did nothing. So hopefully that the characters that actually show up are going to do something. Emerald instead. Dream or, or the like, okay, this is time for Malfurion and Tyrande to step forward. Now that we're going to this ancestral homeland of the Earthen with this ancient connection to the dwarven legacy of Azeroth, this is a time for our dwarves to take center stage. No, I, I like right, dwarves. So let's I think talk it's about be cool. the eight new dungeons in the War Within. What are your guys' favorites or the notable ones you want to talk about? Well, so one, let's see, one that's fun to talk about is actually probably the first dungeon the players are going to see in their journeys, and it's going to be tested early on in the alpha. This is the Rookery Dungeon in the Isle of Dorne. The Rookery nice. is the place where the storm griffins were raised and trained by oh. the ancient earthen over over the centuries. Um, you know, dwarves cool. and griffins. Go I, ho hand. I hope there isn't flying. I don't know. I haven't seen test footage of this yet, but I'm kind of done after the Onahar and planes. I don't really want to fly in the dungeon anymore. In hand, and the earthen have a <laughs> legacy do that again. of storm riders that you know we got to see a little sneak peek of. If you, you know, got the war within heroic edition, you might have been flying around on that guy. There's plenty more where that came from in the Isle of Dorne. And so this dungeon, of course, is not all peaceful. Uh, it's been overrun by a group of corrupted earth and known as the Skarden. And we're gonna be on just Ooh. beginning to understand where they came from and what their nature is as we fight through it. But one cool thing- oh, about they, These guys are like void corrupted, huh? Look at that. They got like void horns, void, uh, void shit in their beards. what their nature is as we fight through it. Damn. But one cool thing about this dungeon is that it's actually part of the main campaign as you play through Isle of Dorne. Now, I know some people mm -hmm. are instantly saying, wait a minute, I don't like doing dungeons. I just like solo questing. That's terrible. Well, fortunately, Who doesn't like in 1025, towards the end of Dragonflight, we introduced this feature called Follower Dungeons. And we're really happy to bring that to the yeah, level yeah. up dungeons in War Within right yeah. from the outset. So that you can go in solo with NPC allies as you play through the dungeon if that's what you prefer. No or, friends, course, no problem. You can just queue up with regular with, with friends or random group mates through the group finder. But what this lets us do is, where appropriate, we can really have the story flow directly through dungeons in a way that Come, we couldn't let us lay in ways waste that kind of to this realm. And Feeny, thank you for the follow. Welcome to our It's frankly awkward because sometimes mm -hmm. major villains die in dungeons. Dungeons are places of great importance. Yeah, in they're good zone, storytelling but elements. We couldn't really tie them directly into the questing because we didn't want to create an obstacle for players who really just prefer to keep playing solo. I've, I have enjoyed like going through the questing while leveling up, and then you go, you go, you get sent to a dungeon basically, and you get to kind of finish out that story or play out a major story element uh, while you're leveling up. I think it's a great way to reveal some lore, which you guys know I love, and get into uh, in more involved in the story that you've been playing through by questing. Tina, is there anything that you like? One of my favorites is in Hallowfall. So it's called the Priory of the Sacred Flame, and it's this Erethor monastery. Damn. So uh, one of the coolest so parts cool. is the final boss room. There's this giant uh, window that frames the crystal that is embedded in the ceiling of Hallowfall. And so I love, you know, the beauty of the room, as well as just how it... It's like a scarlet monastery vibe. I freaking love this zone. I is in with the narrative of the story as a whole. And another really cool one, Appreciate it's the it. City of Threads. So this one is underneath the Nerubian city proper. And so it's really uh, interesting to see the ancient civilization that the newer civilization was built on top of. And just to think about the layers of Nerubian. Nice. Oh, that's the final boss in the raid right there. In history that you know, is in this land. Is it that the, the ancient civilization back in like Lich King? Even Far before oh, that, even even. Farther before that? Yeah, the Nerubians, I think, you know, we might think of them as monstrous or arachnid. They are one of the great powers, one of the great advanced civilizations of Azeroth. 
Right up. Nice, man. I love what he's saying right now. That's so true. In terms of lore, they go back so far. The Nerubian Empire is, is amazing. And I'm so excited to go in there, there and see it. Wow. The, you know, Seems like we're going to get some good lore. And the others that helped shape the course of, of the world's history. We've only really seen hints of them going back to, to Wrath if you ran the Asjol Nerub or Unconnect right. Dungeons. You could see you know, their buildings off in the, in the background. But you know, they were a civilization that at its height rivaled the High Elves and the Nightborn on the surface. Oh, yeah. That's insane. They were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Lich King's armies and win until... Dude, they, they gave the Lich King the friggin' run for his money. They were one of the hardest enemies he had to beat. The old gods and you know, their forces on another flank eventually led to the Nerubians being overwhelmed. But really being able to explore what they're all about is one of the things we're most excited about when it comes to War Within. One of the things we're excited to uh, bring is an arachnophobia filter, if you will. For all of you out there who uh, could <laughs> never, you know, go to that spider section in Nax, uh, you'll be able to turn on our arachnophobia filter and all uh, spider what? beasts. Does that help? I don't know. I don't. Is any? Are there any arachnophobia people in the chat? Uh, does that help? I feel like I feel like crabs look like uh, spiders of the ocean. <laughs> I'm into crabs, so very pumped about that. <laughs> Crab yeah, it actually people. looks it. It, it works way better than you might think just hearing okay. that sentence. I can't That's wait for so players funny. to you know, be able to jump in, <laughs> turn it on, and you know, hopefully feel more comfortable in parts of our world. You know, this is something that when we announced the Nerubian-centric themes of War Within at BlizzCon, we heard trepidation from portions of our community who love WoW, but were worried they weren't going to be able to hate spiders? Oh my god. <laughs> Honestly, prior to that, it's something we heard hey, concerns about from within our own team, where there are, you know, people who genuinely felt uncomfortable with these elements of the game that we were building together. And so we set out to try to find a solution that would still, you know, preserve the fidelity of the game, but really make it more approachable, more accessible to everyone. The great Speaking Crabubian. Yeah, that's what it's going to be, the Crabubian Empire. Speaking of the Nerubians, once we reach level 80, we're going to go to the new raid, Nerubo Palace. Uh, is there anything you want to speak about oh, that? Oh, damn. Yeah, this raid is epic in so many ways. Uh, one oh, of the... damn, look at that motif. Holy crap, this looks amazing. Uh, we're going to be spending a shit ton of time here. You guys know that. Whoa, look at all the red crystals everywhere. And then the blue, this is usually like what we see, the blue and stuff, but this red is wild. Damn. You want to speak about that? Looks yeah, awesome. this raid is epic in so many ways. Uh, one of the coolest parts is there's this beautiful uh, showpiece uh, that is just in front of the Queen's Palace. Whoa. It represents the Nerubian race, and it just shows how highly Queen Ensrek thinks of her people and herself. <laughs> this raid will get one of the sections really of the raid will cool. get to check out her innermost sanctum. This is where you know only uh, VIPs for the Nerubians get to go, and you really get to explore the dark elegance of. Of her palace. I think, again, as we were just saying, like, oh, Nerubian look, that's all those, like, new, um, they're, uh, these guys look like they could be playable, honestly. They're that new, like, race of Nerubians that have basically, like, evolved. And we need to remember they're an advanced race, very, you know, just this epic civilization. I think there's some parallels probably to going back to the Nightborn in Suramar and what going into that yeah, city really and that cool. palace felt like. We really want to show the sophistication here. It's, this is not a monstrous supervillain lair. <laughs> This is, you know, a, a superpower of Azeroth that we find ourselves, you know, facing off against. But yeah, the, the Queen Anserek encounter that Tina mentioned, she's going to be the end boss of sort of the initial season, the initial raid tier. Uh, the encounter team is hard at work on this one. I can't wait to see it tested later on in beta. Um, this is, you know, the, the whole room is really purpose built Her model to showcase cool. some vertical elements. And, you know, just it's just an incredible set piece. But we want to, as always, integrate the environment wherever possible into our encounters. So you're facing off against both, you know, a very powerful magical user, but also someone who is arachnid in nature. <laughs> and a Nerubian monk. Kind of the Nerubian monk that kicks with all of its legs. Parts of the <laughs> fantasy of, you know, scaling a web while locked in combat against the queen. Those are the things that we're currently exploring. Can't wait to Damn, see really that cool. for testing. I feel like it's going to be a very ad-heavy fight. This queen's going to be calling down all kinds of shit. We're going to get tier sets again. Certainly. I think well, last time we tried. Yeah, to we're going to look at all these tier sets. All torches and pitchforks in the street. New tier <laughs> means new tier sets. And these yeah, days, we're going to check all these. We're going to look at every single tier set and colorway uh, oh, after this video. Only had, we had to raid in order to get the tier set. Now you can get them from a wide array of activities, whether you're a raider, Mythic Plus player, or an outdoor world player, which includes now Delves. 
Ah, Delves. Let's get let's start talking about Delves. Yeah, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, I mean, Delves are one of the major new features in War Within, and I think we're really excited to offer a, a more structured, progression-oriented extension of the outdoor world gameplay that we know is the favorite of so many of our players. And you know, Delves are these seamless experiences integrated into all of our zones where you can have these localized, varied adventures alongside in the first season, Brand Bronzebeard, either on your own or with friends. Um, yeah, the and- brand mechanic is interesting. We're going to talk more about these two. Going, uh, there's a bunch of test footage and shit we're going to look at. And but finally, I, you know, get a shot at some questioning delves a little bit just through an extension we'll of the outdoor world ecosystem. Yeah, we'll be able to get it from the Great Wall, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. super exciting. Yeah, that's cool. So one of our goals with building delves was we really wanted the player to just feel like they adventured, came across a place and could just, you know, go in and see what's inside. When you walk up to the delve, there's this, you know, dark misty door and you click on it and then it just disappears and you just walk into your own personal delve instance. So very excited about that. That's actually a really, that's really cool. That's a cool take on a, on a dungeon portal. It's much more immersive. It's like a misty door that you click on and then once you do, you basically shard into it or you instance into it. That's actually cool. I like that. Even though it's such a simple mechanic, it makes it so much more immersive. I like that a lot. I mean, players are going to see how that first experience the great on the Outdoor the and early in the Alpha. Uh, the first delve they're likely to encounter is Earthcrawl Mines. You're going to encounter your good friend Bran Bronzebeard outside an ancient earthen mine that has been overrun with Nerubians who are borrowing up from the depths. Cool. Bran will ask you if you want him to outfit himself as a, as a healer or as a damage dealer to help support you. And you'll venture in and have nice. your very first delve experience. Um, you'll be able to choose whether you want to do it on tier one or tier two difficulty. Tier one is kind of the default. This is for everyone experience. Tier, tier two. two is for those who want to Come opt on. into a bit more of a challenge because that's what they enjoy. Uh, there will be higher tiers that can be unlocked at max level as part of the end game and seasonal progression. And we really just can't wait to get player feedback from the outset, really all through alpha on this new system, on you know how it is or isn't working for you and whether we can you know, really meet everyone's expectations from people who just want a casual romp as an extension of their outdoor world experience sure. to those who want a solo progression challenge that they can really strive to overcome. Um, feedback is going to really help shape how this evolves, but we're yeah. so excited about Delves as a central part of War Within. Uh, the, the good thing is they have been listening to feedback. In terms of what I've seen so far from Delves, and we're going to delve more into that, I should say, the, the, they seem okay, kind of repetitive so far from what I've seen. But the good thing is they're not required. It's not a Torghast required chore that you're going to have to do. It's just another way to level up. They're going to give heroic level raiding gear from what I've heard in your vault. So that's pretty cool. It seems like it's going to be a nice way to progress your alts and stuff too. Um, but we'll see how they iterate on, on delves going forward. I think the opinions, you know, still to be, to be determined on those. Yeah, I'm excited that we're going to be able to it's just a big jump feature. in and get or like go solo with Bran or you can have friends, but also just get rewards in that way, especially the tier sets with the catalyst exactly. and then that really cool mechanical mount. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to kind of be an introduction to the, sort of the Delves end game. As you hit max level, as you hit 80 and start to get a sense of the Delves ecosystem, yeah. right at the start of that, we're going to give you this epic customizable mount, Ooh. kind of the, the successor to the Oh, this is the one they showed the concept art of. Oh, I haven't seen this yet. So this is now in game. Oh, wow. So this is the one that you can customize like all this shit on it. It's a completely customizable mount. That's really cool. See, I love this stuff. When they add cosmetic rewards to like the end of a challenge mode, delve kind of stuff like that, it makes it so much more exciting to do and doesn't make it feel like you have to do it. But man, if you do do it, you can get some really cool shit. This looks cool. There's a couple drakes you had in oh, Dragon damn, Isles cool. where you'll be able to, through doing delves, earn wow. a variety of different customizations and attachments that you can mix and match to really create this. your own personalized flying mount. So does this mechanical cool. mount have dynamic flying? This is one of the big questions we had moving on from oh, Dragon like Flight. Spin. The question of like, well, okay, dragon riding is amazing. Mm-hmm. We're, we can't get rid of this. Mm-mm. But how is this going to work alongside of the hundreds of mounts that we already have in players' collections? And how, from a design perspective, how do we navigate a world where some mounts can fly in this awesome way and others can only do the old quote-unquote static flight? Uh, fortunately, I think our art team was able to work out an amazing solution for us. Yeah, we were very excited to Damn. be able to make pretty much all mounts. I want to see the barrel roll. I think that's the important one for every single one of these. How's it going to look when it does the barrel roll? 
able to dynamically fly. So even Nimrod's head in, we figured it out. We made it work. So I'm really excited to see Nimrod's, Nimrod's head. Going oh, like there super- it is, Dave. Look at that. It, it's it's actually pretty cool. The the propeller drops to the back. That's a pretty interesting animation. Wow, they actually put in some work here. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see Nimrod's head going like super fast. <laughs> Another feature wow. coming in the War Within that I'm really excited about, as well Looks as good. a lot of other people, is warbands. Yeah, warbands, I mean, again, I think as I summarized it at BlizzCon, it's just account-wide everything, mm-hmm. almost everything. Uh, it, this, you know, players increasingly play multiple characters, and this is something we've heard loud and clear, that you know, the game needs to be more alt-friendly, that players want to be able to choose where they spend their time across their different characters instead of feeling like they have to reprogress everything individually. And so, yeah, the Warband is just, it is your account in its entirety. It is your collection of champions, whether they're Horde or Alliance, regardless of what realm they're on. Oh, yeah, this is the war the Warband uh, bank. Yeah, I'm we're going to talk about this, too. This thing's interesting. You can spend some gold at this they're place. They're all part of the same Warband, which gives <laughs> access to various shared progression systems. And then you get to see all of your favorites on, uh, you know, one screen together. So in our new UI, we'll have warbands, and you'll be able to be like, you know, move four up into that space. And see There's a off. lot of potential here. I hope they add customization to it. I really, really do. Like, be able to pick where the camp is, you know, the background. Be able to add some cool things in the background based on, like, things you've done in the game. Maybe a boss's head mounted on a spike or something. Some really cool stuff that you could do with this since... It's it's your screen. It's your warband. I, w- I would love if this becomes more customizable. All hanging out around a campfire. Is that on the character select screen? Yeah, the character select oh, screen. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's going to be totally different than what we're used to logging in. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. You'll, you'll know, like, this is a completely different world. It's a completely different welcome into World of Warcraft. Very um, cool. What we showed off at BlizzCon was just actually a UI mock-up, but we're excited to see people react to the real <laughs> thing. And really, as with everything else, you know, warbands are a foundation. There, this is a system that we want to build the next generations of World of Warcraft on. Now, in 2004, WoW launched with everything character-based. In 2024, WoW is going to shift to everything being account-based. And we can't wait to nice. hear feedback about what other areas we can expand upon here. And that's going to shape not just War Within, but later updates and expansions. And we're just, you know, just excited about this platform that better reflects the way our players are looking to play World of Warcraft today. You can't forget about PvP. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so oh, we have a PvP new updates? battleground called the Deep Hall. This oh, one shit. is earthen themed. It's a bit of a. Mash. I actually had no idea about this. This is a complete surprise to me. Between, is this, uh, is this a move the payload kind of? Okay, I'll let her talk. Mines and a Rathy Basin. So, you know, hold some points, push some carts. Uh, we're really excited wow. to see how players uh, navigate around this one. It's like yeah, an Overwatch it, payload moving, uh, it looks like. In terms of how players are interacting with it, um, there is an overhaul to our rated battleground system that is coming with War Within. Yeah, Overwatch and well. uh, People who've been paying attention over the course of Dragonflight have checked out our uh, battleground blitz our kind of brawl that was testing out a 8v8 solo queue rated battleground format. We're happy to move to that as a default for how rated battlegrounds are going to work going forward. I think we're really excited to make that battleground experience that personally I've always felt is the best part of WoW PvP, the larger scale, more cooperative, objective based, um, you know, collaborative, competitive setting as opposed to the deathmatch style in arena. So to make that more accessible to everyone who, you know... He's totally wants- on point there. Battlegrounds, what's fun about it is working together as a team. If you want to go, you know, uh, you want the intensity of just, like, fighting somebody 1v1 almost, then you go do arenas and shit. But he, yeah, I, I like this take Battlegrounds on loves PvP. Um, we know, you know, it's a bit overdue, honestly, us mm-hmm. adding a new Battleground map into the rotation. Damn. And we're excited to do more of this going forward. We're excited to have a new <laughs> framework that can make Battlegrounds more central to the end game rewarding part of PvP. And yeah, this is just you know, the beginning of a new chapter. Yeah, Another very feature cool. in the War Within is Hero Talents. We've been having a lot of articles talking about I'm so them. Scared. What are th- I'm so scared about Hero Talents because it's gonna it's gonna make or break a lot of shit. And I honestly I wish they didn't do it, but they did it, so I just hope it goes well. Some of the other things that we can expect with the Hero Talents coming forward. Well I can say there's gonna be no more blogs and articles releasing hero talents because they'll be there for you to jump in and play and i think that's you know the, mo- the most exciting thing we're yeah, so that's, grateful that's going to be important to the community for all of alpha it. and beta testing i think the most important thing that's going to come out of it is hero talent feedback for sure the feedback and discussion in recent months going back to the first blog in december this really helped us 
shape this central feature of how people's class gameplay is going to evolve. Um, you're going to see hero talents that you haven't yet seen for the trees that we haven't discussed previously. Nice. And for many of the ones that we have released, you'll log in and see changes that are directly shaped. I'm not saying that I outright hate hero talents. I can't hate them. I haven't tried it yet. But I just feel like it's a risk they didn't need to take. Maybe they could have just done like class skins or something. Uh, but they could be great. Who knows? Maybe I'll look back at this video and I'll be like, Sam, you idiot. Hero talents were amazing. I'm just scared. That's all. I'm just a little bit scared. Shaped by your feedback. Uh, by what we heard loud and clear in some cases about what was and wasn't that looks really cool. Um, we, we've committed to have as many of these playable right from the outset as possible. We will have 100% of the hero trees it. available That's and cool. playable not long into alpha. And then the rest of the journey is going to be about iteration, tuning, and really just dialing yeah. it all in to make the polished experience. This, is, this is the main part of alpha and beta for sure is going to be tuning these. Yeah, I'm sure I'd, I'm sure a lot of them are busted. I'm excited about it. Right so now. what are we doing with professions in the War Within? Uh, I think when we really overhauled professions in professions. Dragonflight, we saw that as, as a kind of a permanent shift in how professions were going to work going forward. So you can expect, you know, new recipes, different enchants, but the same fundamental sort of progression and structure to professions that you saw in Dragonflight. One big piece of feedback that we heard throughout Dragonflight, though, was a bit of frustration with the work order system from crafters who were just looking to complete yeah, quests, I looking did not to skill up, it. but found themselves competing and often racing to grab work orders w with their fellow crafters. Um, so what we're excited to offer is a baseline availability of basically NPC crafting orders. Uh, so it could be you know Earthen in Isle of Dorne, who need... Nice. I'm happy for people who like professions. That's a good thing. You can level up your profession through fake work orders. That's cool. A hammer made or need a helmet made, and they're constantly putting their offer, their work orders up onto the, onto the market so that there's always something for you to grab. The player ones will still be more lucrative, but there should always be that baseline availability if you just want to skill up, you just want to practice your trade skill. And there's also some cool potential cool. for narrative tie-ins, the ability to have quests that now can point you towards that system because we can count on it always being there. So with Dragonflight and the profession overhaul, there was also a UI overhaul. Is there anything we're going to see with The War Within? Yeah, so the UI overhaul, it's basically a continued improvements that we want to make over time. One of the things that I'm very excited about is the uh, quest bang over, uh, overhaul. So we're going to have a bunch of new icons that will okay. make uh, what type of quest it is much more clear. Uh, so that's a daily, it's got like the refreshable. One of the new on ones that you'll see is one that's like, we consider it an important one. Yeah, well, I saw these in um, the new t uh, Time Running Pandemonium, you know, the, the Pandaria remix event. I saw a bunch of these, like people were testing and I was like, what the hell does the purple one mean? I guess it means important now aren't campaign, but they're pretty important to your character. For instance, okay. some uh, that must-do ones for your profession, or ones where you're going to unlock the revival catalyst. This is good. Yeah, I think as we've leaned more and more into outdoor world gameplay and varied gameplay there, different types of public events over the course of Dragonflight, honestly, we reached a point about halfway through Dragonflight where we just took a look at our map and kind of recoiled in horror at the number of different yes. icons that were there. It's hard to it was look just at. a kind of icon soup situation that made us say, like, it's kind of at this point we've advanced far past the world of oh you just have some daily quests or world quests here we need a clearer visual language and so really excited to just evolve that central interface that players use to log in and see what there is to do in wow on a Th game. this is great you saw you guys saw me when i was doing my legendary um you know my legendary weapon quest line you guys literally witnessed me getting lost on the map i was like where the hell's the quest that i have to do right now for this i don't care about all the other shit that's on the map and there were so many quests they were overlapping i couldn't find it and you guys literally had to help me find the shit so this is great i hope this works uh, works out well because yeah it was definitely a problem for me so that covers the war within and the alpha is starting extremely soon pretty much working on getting it stood up <laughs> as we speak, as we sit here right now. And yeah, so the way this is gonna work is pretty similar to the Dragonflight Alpha for those who, who followed that, where really each week, each new build that we release, we're focusing on a different piece of War Within to concentrate player right. feedback and our attention to just really get all that feedback in and maximize the quality. So we're gonna start off zone by zone, level band by level band. This first week is gonna be the Isle of Dorne, level 70 to 73 cool. or so, the dungeon and delves there, as well as universal systems like Hero Talents. With successive alpha builds, we'll move on to other zones, other portions of War Within. I'm inviting more waves of people. If you haven't gone to the website to opt in yet, that's a great reminder <laughs> to do so. Um, yeah. We you know, really pick from, really, there's no secret to it. We're just 
randomly pulling lots of folks in and hope to get, by the end of this, countless people into our testing. Um, once we've gotten through all of those rounds of focus testing, we'll move into our beta phase, which really is an end-to-end -end holistic test of War Within from 70 all the way to 80 and the end game and beyond. And throughout you know, feedback, bug reports, suggestions, all of this is instrumental mm -hmm. to helping turn what we have now into the finished product that we want to be the best it possibly can be awesome. for all of our players later this year. Thank you so much for joining me for The War Within. And thank you for joining us for this. Really, this is one of the most exciting times ever for the development team when we get to pull back the curtain and welcome you all into this world that we've been building in the last few years. So can't wait to see you in the alpha. And can't wait to hear all of your feedback. Really looking forward to everyone checking out what we built. Thank you so much. See you guys in the alpha. Great, yeah, no, that's really cool. I'm, I'm excited for this. The, the good thing is I really feel like they've been listening to feedback, right? Like we used to always hear, give us your feedback and they've proven through Dragonflight that they do in fact listen to it now. So this is, this is good. A lot of the stuff I heard here was nice. The PVP thing surprised me. I didn't even know we were getting that, but a uh, great video. Hey, it's gonna matter a lot what happens in the coming months. and. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it.